Hi. Hello. Coming on doing a quick Facebook Live. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hi. Glad to be coming on today. Going to do a... Um, starting to get used to doing these lives. I better start getting used to doing them. <laughs> amen. 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 Just Hey, cuz. Hi, my beautiful cousin. It's coming on doing a, um, going to do a live on, um, just preparing, um, preparing for marriage and you know, the Lord really been, hey, sis, how are you? So um, I really, um, the Lord really been revealing some things to me. And I just want to just continue to come on and just share, um, share the things that the Lord is given to me in this season. This is a new season. This is another season that um, the Lord is totally like shifting my world you know and it's like okay lord whichever way you want me to go that's the way that i will go and um and so it, you know like i i stated last night um different things that i talked about last night and i just want to be able to keep an ongoing um conversation along these lines because actually this year i am i'm um, currently writing a, a book on this particular topic um the road to um, to marriage and it's like the Lord over the years I'm just sharing a lot of my experiences as well as how um, the Lord has been leading me throughout at least 20 20 years of um, of just being in ministry and just my 20 years of just walking with the Lord and um, I said Lord you know the Lord was just telling me it's time for you to start sharing those areas because you know in the body of Christ it's like we're we're not equipping um, the singles, even though we, we have our single conferences and everything and, you know, the Lord just been really doing some awesome things with, within that particular area. But I believe there's another level that the Lord wants to bring us into in equipping, um, the singles into, um, being prepared more for marriage and just being able to share our experiences, being able to impart, um, into, um, the singles, whether they, especially with the younger generation in this hour, uh, we've seen a lot of the younger ones is, is totally, you know, it, and it's, and it's funny because actually I'm sure the older people were saying the same thing about us when we was coming up and like, them, them, you know, the younger generation is crazy, you know? And so I'm sure that they were saying the same thing about us at that time. And so, you know, it's like now we're looking at the younger generation and, and we're seeing how the enemy has really been, um, has really been taking our young people into a, into such a, a you know destructive uh, path, and so um, so I believe in this hour that it is time for us to uh, to really equip those that um, that needs to be equipped for marriage because not only. Um, are, is God bringing people together for marriage, but He's really bring, bringing people together for king is kingdom, um, kingdom assignment. It's a kingdom assignment, and so it takes it um, a, on a whole total different level when, when, uh, when the marriage is looked at as like a, more of, um, of of us coming together and doing kingdom than us just coming together with just having a mate. And so um, the importance of making sure that we marry the right person, the person that God is has ordained for us to marry. And um, and even, you know, I was going to post earlier, but I didn't. But um, even if, if you have been married, you know, and you, you're now divorced, you know, there's still, you know, God is still merciful. God is still gracious. God is still able to... Um, to bring a mate into your life, you know, so it's not like, you know, sometimes people feel like, well, you know, it's over for me and it's not over for you. It's never over for you. As long as you're still breathing, it's never over for you. And I have, you know, I, I have even a brother in Christ that he is, um, he just not too long went through a divorce, but you know, God is still gracious, you know, and, and he's, he was starting to have those thoughts in his mind, like, okay, 
um, am I going to ever be married again? But, you know, I, you know, I begin to tell him that God is still faithful. God is still faithful to bring a mate into your life. And, um, and so, you know, so, you know, we, we're looking at like, maybe he's getting ready to get married again. So we'll see what the Lord is going to do in that particular situation. Hi, my other cousin. And so, um, so I just wanted to come on and share. And um, I know last night I didn't really throw out a scripture. So, you know, you know, some of Bible scholars got to throw out the scripture, <laughs> you know. And so, of course, you know, I'm going to come from the scripture, First uh, Corinthians 10 and 13. And um, I was talking about the temptation, you know, the, and I'm just going to read the scripture in itself because, you, you know, sometimes we can, you know, leave some parts off. <laughs> of the scripture and be like, oh my gosh, she done left the part of the scripture. She don't even know the Bible. So, you know, sometimes you just got to go ahead and write that scripture down and, you know, and quote from what the word says, you know. And so anyway, um, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 states, um, there have no temptation taken you, but such as common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted um, above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. And so, um, so we're going to talk about the subtle traps and the time in between you getting, um, your, your single and God is leading you into towards marriage. And, um, and there are so many subtle traps. You know, a lot of times we, uh, we, we, we think of, you know, someone coming along and, um, and, and, and leading us down the wrong road of where maybe, you know, this, this person that um, maybe this person could be the, the one that God is sending. And we don't really look at that there are times where the enemy sends a past person from years ago back into our life and we automatically assume that then that may be the person that God has for us. And that's not always the case. Actually recently I was um I was talking to a good brother in Christ of mine and um and you know I I share even his story because he always tell me, you know, if it's gonna benefit the body of Christ, sis, go ahead and tell it. <laughs> You know, he ain't one of them kind of like, you know, you can go back and be like, oh, my gosh, she was she was telling your story on social media. No, you won't be able to do that. So anyway, I always have somebody's permission. Anytime I'm going to share their story, I always get their permission. Is it OK if I share your story? And so um, he, him and I was having a conversation recently and he was telling me, he said, you know, he had just finished going through a divorce and um, maybe months prior, you know, way months later, you know, he ended up running into this young lady that he knew years ago, you know, at least maybe 20 years ago. And he told me, he said, you know, I had a crush on her years ago and she could, I mean, he was just wrapped up on this girl, you know, and I was like, you know, he was sending me pictures. This is her, this is her. And I was like, nah, bro, something ain't right about this, <laughs> you know? And so he really was caught up. And so I was like, you know, I'm just going to pray on it. And, um, and, you know, because I just knew that that was, that the enemy was trying to set him up for failure, you know, and the, the young lady you know she was already and she was already in you know in ministry so she was even going over to um to visit every now and then over at their ministry and so um you know he really felt like you know this could be the one that God has him but really that was like an old crush that he had when he was younger you know that the enemy was trying to bring back into his life that did not have you know, there are times when in our lives where we have to know those that is um, that we have to we have to shut that door. You know, we have to close that door because what the enemy does, the enemy was always sin. He will always sin um, someone before the right one comes along. <laughs> you know, he, he always does that. He always send um, the distraction. And we, and you know, we always talk about this. We talk about how, you know, when you're waiting on your mate, you know, to, to always be mindful, to always have, you know, a discerning, a discerning ear and a discerning eye, you know, to make sure that the enemy doesn't slip something in on you. Because a lot of times people pretend, people pretend that they are born again and, and, and some of them can be born again, but they, you know, they're, they're not equally yoked to you, to, to you. 
you know, and, and it's a lot of times where people have been um, have been snared into marrying a person from their past, you know, just because a person know you or you known a person for so long, that doesn't mean you still know them. People change over over a couple of years. And I can even, you know, even talk about myself when I was in a relationship with uh, with the person I talked about last night. I was in a relationship with him for years, you know, and my thing was in my heart and my my things was this. I didn't want to. I really honestly didn't want to meet anybody else. I didn't want to because I, you know, he knew me, you know, I knew him very well. You know, I mean, we, we, yeah, familiar spirit. And I mean, I knew him, you know, even though I met him um, later on in life, you know, when I was in my early thirties, but still I knew him. We was together for, for such a time that, you know, it was like, I ain't want to, I didn't want to meet nobody else. And because of that, um, because of that, if God wanted to bring somebody else new in my life, then I was like, God I already know him. You know, as we always say, you know, we, you know, I already got him well groomed, <laughs> you know, and so it's like we, we, we pretty much really had already known each other and over a course of years, but um, he wasn't in that place that, that he was supposed to be in, you know, supposed to be where um, for, for marriage to even come about, you know, and so um, just because, just because we known them for some time. Just because we known them for some for some years, that doesn't mean that that they are the one that um, that the Lord has for us. Blessings, blessings, Apostle Cunningham. Good to see you on, sweetheart. And um, you know, and so we have to be careful. Just because you know, we and, and a lot of people have been snared. A lot of people have been trapped. But once again, you know, um, they have been snared because they've been knowing a person for so long, and they don't want. You know, they they hindering God for bringing that new person into their life. And sometimes, you know, um, getting to know a person is not just it just not um, just in that natural state. You know, we think, you know, I have to know this person um, in the natural. Of course, the natural is is important, but it's more so important. When we know that person spiritually. We got, that's the that's the main thing. God, where are they? Where are they in the spirit? You know, where are they located? You know what I'm saying? If especially if if you are a strong leader, you're a strong ministry leader, you don't want to marry just anybody. You need somebody that's like, you know, that can handle your mantle, that can handle your anointing, that can handle um your metron, they can they can handle um your level of influence. If they can't handle that as as a as in the spirit, then they they will not be able to handle um, the weight of where God is carrying you they're, they're not going to be anything but a hindrance. You got to find out what are their, what are their goals in, you know, in the Lord, you know, you got to find out all of that stuff. And it does not, it takes a lot of prayer because sometimes folk have stuff. I tell y'all people, people are good at hiding stuff. They don't want to come out and, you know, and, and tell the truth. And it's sad that it's sad that we literally have to, you know, you got to almost fast. <laughs> you got to almost fast 60 days. You know what I'm saying? You done lost about 120 pounds. <laughs> you know, you done, you done, you done lost, you know, about 120 pounds. Hey, sissy. And, uh, you know, over, you know, trying to fast. The, you know, fast and pray, you know, to make sure that the joke is right, you know, or, or, the, or the female is right, you know, and it's, it's sad because, you know, we don't practice that honesty as we should in the body of Christ. And I believe, you know, as kingdom people, we, we should have enough in us to be honest. You know, I mean, even with myself, if I feel like somebody is attracted I'm not gonna sit up there and wait, you know. I don't even sit up there and wait a week. You know what I'm saying? I go, I go ahead and put it in check and be like, nah, I ain't interested. Just, you know, and just let it go. You know, I'm like, nah. And but sometimes people drag it along and they hold it on to you and and you know, and they don't have no intentions on marrying you, or or they got stuff going on in their heart and they ain't trying, you know, they they're not trying to tell you about it. And, and you sitting there like, you know, how, how in the world I had to wait almost 10 years. <laughs> almost you know to um 
almost 10 years to find out about this stuff that's going on. Hey, blessings. Um, uh, all this stuff that's been that's really been built up in them. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you, you know, I love being transparent. I, I love being transparent because, you know, in my experiences, you know, of, of being able to relate, you know, and I love relating to uh, especially the women in the body of Christ. I really love really relating. And, you know, it's like, um, even, you know, even with my, my last relationship and I do share in that, in this particular area, you know, in my last relationship, there were things that I didn't see at the beginning. So the Lord was like holding things. He was literally holding things off and he was really had me in a place of protection because yes, I was in love with this guy. I was in love with him. We was together for almost um, off and on for almost nine years. So I was in love with this guy and, you know, with hopes of getting married, you know, I had hopes of, of marrying him. And it wasn't like that kind of relationship where you like, you, you know, you were just with somebody or, or no, it wasn't that way. We both, we both was in that particular, um, we both was in that vein of wanting, having the desire to get married, but he struggled with things that, uh, that he, it was like a, a cycle for him. You know, it was a cycle and there was things that even though he tried to break out of, um, he couldn't because the, the, just the, the, he had, he had to want deliverance for himself. And so, you know, when he was start, it was like a cycle for him when he wanted to start all over again. And, uh, or when he started all over again, it was like the enemy would come in and tear it down again. And he would have to start all over again. And that's where his frustration would come in at. And it was like, you know, um, you know, people in his past, you know, different people would say certain things to him to crush his spirit. But then at the same time, it was like, I couldn't be, I was, I could not help him. You know, in my heart, I wanted to help him because I saw the potential. I saw um, the potential of what he had in him as a man, you know, and but I, I wasn't the one to pull him out of that. And because I had the heart to want to pull him out of that, then I stayed there longer than, you know, the intended or I shouldn't even got into it to to begin with, you know, because I really I, you know, I just, I felt like, you know, hey, this is the one that I'm going to marry. You know, I wasn't just out there just, just, you know, I won't, you know, I wasn't just out there sleezing, you know, I don't, you know, that was, that's not my, that's never been where I was out there just, okay, I'm, I'm just going to continue to get out here and date. No, that's not who I am. You know, either it's going to be you, or it's going to be you. And if it ain't, it ain't going on about your business. And, but, um, for the most part, you know, I, I just felt in my, in my heart that, you know, I was going to end up marrying him. And, um, and so there was things that happened, um, years later that I started to see there was different, um, bless you, apostle side, love you, sweetie. Um, it was just certain things that I began to see later, you know, and those things did not, um, start to surface until, um, my last time where the Lord was really telling me not to um, get back in a relationship with him again, because we had separated for at least three years. And um, and through our separation, you know, it was like um, when we came back together and I let him back in again, um, I wasn't supposed to let him back in. I wasn't I wasn't supposed to. Um, to let him back in. Hey, my sister is on. This is my real sister for real, y'all. And so, so, um, so, um, you know, it was like at that time, the Lord really began to reveal, really began to expose what was, you know, what was in, it wasn't so much what was in his heart because it wasn't him. And that was the part that I had to separate where, um, over the course of years, because he had not been delivered, there was a spirit of rage that was in him, but it was, but, but it was, it was like, it was suppressed. Yeah, that's the word. It was suppressed. And so over the years of all of his hurt, all of his frustration, all of his anger, you know, eventually it ended up coming out. And that one, that one side ended up coming out on me. So my last, my last year, um, that last time we was together, 
it was like um, I, I experienced one morning of um, of abuse, of physical abuse. And I never, <laughs> I never, I never, I mean, I never had a man to ever put his hands on me, ever. Not, not ever. You know, I was like, you you can say whatever you want to say. And there are times where I, I won't let a man say whatever he want to say to me without me not, you know, without me not saying something back. And I won't, you know. But for the most part, I never had a man, especially uh, someone that I loved, you know, and that was the part that hurt. Now, as far as me forgiving, I had no problems with forgiving because I knew that I knew what was going on with him. You know, as far as the person, the true person, I knew the real person. And um, and so later, you know, I, I didn't have a problem with forgiving him and I did forgive him. And the thing about it is that he was willing to go get help. That was the whole thing. He was willing to go get help because he was just that damaged. But I couldn't do anything. I couldn't I couldn't help him. And so, um, you know, I supported him when it came to him getting the help that he needed. Um, but for the most part, it was like the Lord was like enough is enough because I, I had really became drained. I became drained in my own spirit and I got tired. I got tired of, you know, of really um I couldn't do it anymore, and especially with the you know, it's so much that you can give. But then you come to a certain place in where God is like, no, I have more for you, you know. And um, and that was something that was still in my heart where God had to um, God literally had to break that area. He had to break those areas off of my heart um, when it came to him. And, you know, and in order for me to be able to move forward, because even though we we had you know, we had separated, I had to make sure that this person, he wasn't still in my heart, you know, and that's something that we have to do. We have to make sure that, you know, when God is getting ready to lead us into another direction and he wants to bring us into marriage, we have to make sure that those things in our heart, you know, we, when we step over to marriage, we want to make sure that we're whole. We want to make sure that we are whole. And a lot of times what we end up doing, um, when it comes to either coming into a new relationship in, in any kind of relationship, whether it's, you know, you great to come into a, 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 a relationship, a marriage relationship, or even with a ministry relationship, you know, it's like um, you have to be able to break those old things off that's on your heart. The things that may have happened in a ministry, you can't carry those things over to another ministry. We can't, you know, so it's like, in between those moments of, of our disappointments, our moments of hurt, our moments of um, all those areas that has been built up in our heart, those areas, we have to always, it's a constant deliverance. We have to continue to go through deliverance. Deliverance is, a, is not a one-time thing because we get hurt a lot, you know, and especially as, um, as women, especially as leaders, you know, we pour out so much, you know, and doing, even during that whole time, I was still, um, I was still pouring out. That's the, that's the thing. I was still pouring out and the Lord was just like, you know, you, you, I, I gotta pull you back. You know, I gotta pull you back. I have to pull you, um, I gotta pull you out of this relationship, you know, and he was able to do that. And I, and so I, I, you know, continually stand before the Lord and was like, Lord, you know, um, you know, I said, Lord, do you want me to continue to hold on? You want me to continue to hold on to this person? Cause I was believing the Lord, you know, I was like, God, you know, are you going to fix him and then bring him back in my life? Just like some of us do, you know, we ask the Lord, you know, we, we was in a relationship with someone that we truly, truly love. And we hold on to that person in our heart. But God is like, you got to let that person go. That person is not, they're, they're not ready. And if you hold on to them, you're going to slow down. You're going to slow down what I have for you. And you're, you're going to miss what I have for you. And not just um, going into marriage, but you're going to miss everything that I have for you. Because even if that person is not even ready for um for let's say a financial blessing that the Lord wants to bring into your life, you know, then that's going to be a hindrance from you receiving what God has for you. They may not be on that mature, that mature level of where God is carrying you. So it takes it, it takes a whole total different level when it comes to the Lord 
leading us into um, into marriage, you know, and and, you know, those are so many different aspects that we don't really take view of because we what we do, we always, you know, as soon as we find out somebody's going to be our husband or someone's going to be the you know wife, it's like we take our eyes off of the Lord. You know, we take our eyes off of the Lord and we don't allow God to do that complete work in us that even though he may have revealed that person to us and we take our eyes and we be like, okay, Lord, you know, when, when is he going to show up? Or, you know, when is he going to go, go tell me, Hey, you know, um, this date, this is the date we get married or whatever, but we take our eyes off of the Lord and the Lord have not did that complete work in us, but the Lord wants to do a complete work in our heart as individual, you know, even though, yeah, we may be on that path of marriage and everything, but the Lord still, wants to pull us aside and saying, listen, let me get that out of you. Because sometimes we, you know, our attitude can be nasty. I, you know, our attitude, sometimes we think we, we got it all together. We know we don't. <laughs> sometimes our attitude can be really nasty, you know, and let the situation come up. That real, the real side will come out, you know, and, you know, because I, I, I know my sides, you know, I can be nice, but... <laughs> you know yeah and so you know it's like those areas we have to be like okay am i um am i submitted to the lord first that's 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 one key we have to ask ourselves am i submitted to the lord first because he is first and foremost and if we're not submitted to the lord there's no way bless you apostle bailey um you know there's no way that we can submit to a mate there's never, there's no way you can submit to a mate if you're not submitted to the Lord first. If you don't put him first, because he's, he's actually the one that's bringing you two together. <laughs> you know, he's the one that's bringing you together because of the fact that you both are connected to him. You know, and if he's not first, then it's like, it's going to be lopsided. You know, it's going to be like, you know, you, you know, yeah, he can be saved, but if his heart is not connected <laughs> to the Lord, you know, nah, it's like you just wasting your time, you know, you spinning your wheels, you know, but you want to make sure that his heart is totally committed to the Lord and that he's faithful to the Lord and that, you know, and he carries the spirit of excellence and the same way with women, you know, sometimes even, like I said, with, with us, especially with, with us being strong, I want to talk on this as well, you know, as us being strong women, um, sometimes men, you know, I, I, I love our brothers in Christ, you know, but sometimes men can, they can be intimidated by our level of strength, you know, and, um, but there is a harness, you know, a, a, a woman of a true woman of God that, that is, her heart is connected to the father. There is a harness, you know on on her level of strength she knows when to be strong she knows when to carry the weight of of um of ministry she know how to carry the weight of business if you're a business owner you know um you know how to carry the weight of business i mean i, I operate in both in both areas you know in ministry and in business in the business sector so i've seen um i've seen both sides you know of of how men <laughs> a man can be you know and so i had to be able to stand um a lot of times against uh, you know a lot of times against men in, in the in the in the ministry and in business both and i had to just you know be strong and be like nah especially and, and i'm just going to keep it real especially as being you know a black woman in in the business sector it's like you got to take it to a whole totally different level because you got to know your stuff and a lot of times people be like well you ain't got to know all of that you you know you don't have to know all of that but no when you're in when you are a woman and you're in the in the side of business you got to know your stuff and it's the same way with being a minister a ministry you know leader as a woman you know it's a lot of times women um you know women have been beat down <laughs> you know in ministry you know and and you know and it's like you, you get those blows and everything. So when that mate comes, you still have that same mentality. You know, you still have that same mentality. Like, bruh, you come off on me if you want to. You know, you're going to get the same thing. <laughs> Pastor so-and-so just got last week. <laughs> you know, but when, like I said, we when we harness 
that strength that the Lord um, that the Lord has placed on the inside of us as women and um, and even for the men of God, you know, then especially as women, we can be the leader in our in our rightful places. But then we know how to be a wife, you know, and that's the area that a lot of women is not operating in. in this, you know, they, they don't know how to be they know how to be strong you know in, in in leadership or whatever but when it comes to them being a wife you know <laughs> you know i mean i i've seen them you know i'd be like my god you know you're a raven wolf <laughs> you know i mean maybe you know i, I met one per one person you know and um uh, you know, her husband wasn't the, he wasn't the, the best, you know, he wasn't the best, but he was, still, he was still a man of God. You know, he was, a, he's still, a, he's still a man of God, but you know, at, at, at the home front, you know, she was the fivefold. <laughs> she, <laughs> look, she was fivefold ministry. You know, I'd be like, my God, <laughs> you know, she, she was the apostle in the house. She was the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, <laughs> you know, the pastor, you know, I mean, and couldn't cook the lick. You know, but but to God be the glory. But you know, it was like she didn't have that balance. And sometimes, um, you know, women, you know, when women are, so, are really strong, a lot of times women don't want to be taught those things. You know, they don't want to be taught how to be a wife. And so I'm thankful that over the years, you know, just even some things that you know my mom is still was able to instill. Um, in me and my sister that's on as well, you know, my mom was able to steal that. But then once I became, you know, born again, God placed a lot of women, you know, around me, born again women, women that have been in, in, the, in the fold for a long time, you know, and that was seasoned, you know, not just in ministry, but seasoned as, as a wife. And the Lord began to pour into my life. Um, of how to be of uh, how to be a, a wife and how to you know how to different aspects and stuff you know God just began to put together and so um so over the years I was able to see you know seeing certain women that I was like you ain't you know you can be a wife but you ain't wife material today you know you gonna kill a man <laughs> you you gonna set that joke up for failure <laughs> you know and so so with God um with God being connected, having the heart, putting, you know, putting God first, um, in our, in our life and just seeking the Holy spirit. And, you know, God has a way. And if, even if you're not, you know, you're, you're not, you haven't been prepared for marriage, allow the Lord, ask the Lord, God, prepare me for marriage. And that was the thing that, you know, when I first received that word about the Lord, um, going to bring a husband into my life because I, I desired a husband, you know, for I had, I desired a husband. I said, Lord, you know, and that was before I even got into ministry, you know, before I got into ministry and the Lord began to really unfold his plans to me, I wanted a husband, you know, and, the, and that was the first thing that I asked the Lord. I said, well, Lord, you know, when that word came forth about, um, the Lord bringing a, a husband into my life, you know, I was like, well, Lord, you know, show me how to be a wife. And that's when the Lord began to prepare me over the years, you know, of, and I watch women, you know, first ladies, I watch how they treated their husbands. I watch how they, um, they took care, you know, they, they, they made sure that their husbands was, they, I mean, let me tell you, they ain't, you know, them, them wives did not let their husband come out the house looking crazy. You know, they, you know, they did not. <laughs> You know, let their their husband come out that house looking crazy. They, cause they they like, nah. We represent each other. You know, if you walk out the house looking crazy and your head nappy, then you know what I'm saying. And so, then women made sure their husbands look good, and they took care of their husbands. You know, and so that that was the areas that I was able to see, um, seasoned wives taking care of their mates. And so, um, like I said, if if you're if you are not uh, you don't feel like, you know, God, I'm not prepared. or I'm not totally prepared for marriage. Then ask the Holy Spirit, you know, and and like I said, if you've been, you know, if you've been divorced and you are single and you divorced, God still, you know, God, God will still prepare your heart for the next mate, for for the, the mate for you, for that. So you can be compatible for that individual, you know, that you can be compatible 
And, you know, because guess what God wants? He wants you to be compassionate. You know, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not saying that you that you clone the brother or he cloned you. But at least, you know, for the most part, God will cause you to be compatible so that you can be a help. A help. Not a hurt. A help. <laughs> You know, some folks, just, they are hurt, you know, they ain't no help, <laughs> you know, so you want to make sure that you are a help, you know, you just be like, Lord, yeah, she, act, yeah, she acting up, she acting up apostle side, I see her, you know, I'm just trying to make sure I just stay focused, <laughs> but I see her, she is acting up, and so, but you know, it's like, um, you know, we have to, um, we have to ask the Lord when, when God does reveal, and during that period of time of the Lord showing us in the spirit, we have to ask the Lord, okay, Lord, you know, am I in a position to handle even his mantle? Not just us as women, but God, am I, com am I compatible or am I equipped to carry what he carry? You know, because sometimes men can, you know, they, they can be on a, you know, be on a more higher level than us as women. You know, be on a higher, a more higher level than us, and um, and have a a, a a greater level of strength. And so, you know, we have to ask the Holy Spirit, okay, Lord, um, how how can I assist the the man of God that you're bringing into my life? You know, and so those are different things that we have to look at as being yes, exactly, be his wife and not his knife, you know, some, you know, <laughs> you know. And speaking about that knife, you know, it's like our words. That's another area. I'm glad you said that too. But you know, our um, <laughs> you know, our our words. You know, we have to be careful with our words and how we um, how we say certain things. Because let me tell you something. There's some men ain't go. There's some men that they they're they're chill on you. But guess what? You know, you you can keep on running off at your mouth if you want to. <laughs> You know, I mean, anointed or not, you know, you can keep running off at your mouth if you want to. They, you go get a, you get a word out the wild. Ain't gonna be thus said the Lord either. And so, so you, you know, <laughs> you know, because he gonna let you know, you know, hey, and and especially men of God, you know, strong men of God that's honorable, they ain't gonna let you say but so much to him after a while. They gonna be like, hold on, wait a minute. They ain't gonna call you no chick, but they gonna be like, listen here. <laughs> Listen, he is shorty, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, but you know, we have to, um, you know, we have to make sure that, that even with our words and, um, because of course, you know, there are times when we're not going to always say the right thing, you know, and those are times like that. But then at the same time, it's like, we can't, you know, we have to make sure, <laughs> but, but you know, the Lord, you know, is really, um, the Lord will really teach us how to, uh, to love one another, regardless of how we act every now and then. Cause you know, you know, sometimes we, you know, especially us as women, you know, as, we don't know when to stop, you know, sometimes, you know, even I got to be honest with myself, you know, and I know we all on honesty on here, you know, but you know, I'm even honest with myself. Sometimes I don't know when this, you ain't going to get the last word. <laughs> you ain't get the last word today. <laughs> you know, I'm going to make sure that you, you, I may, I may text it to you. You know, I may not say, I may text it over to you, but you ain't going to get the last word. <laughs> You know, you know, I'd be like, mm, yeah, I got some for that. So, you know, it's like the Lord really, um, he really helps us in whatever area that we need help in. And, um, and that whole preparation is key, you know, of, of the Lord really showing us, us, you know, before we get married, not just showing us, you know, his, his red flags, cause we got some red flags too, you know, some, some stuff we we can be crazy when we when we want to, you know. We can be crazy when we want to be, because I I know years ago, thank the Lord for deliverance. Thank the Lord for deliverance, because I was I you know, yeah, I was, you know, it ain't it ain't take me nothing to pick up some and throw so I'll throw some at you. And so thank God for deliverance that God <laughs> that God deliver. <laughs> you know, that would be that would be a bad representative for the kingdom. <laughs> You know, and so, but, you know, before I, you know, born again, you know, I was a thrower, you know, I was a thrower and, you know, every now and then something, you know, I ain't going to go into any details, but, 
you know, some of us can be cutters, you know, and so I just, you know, I just bless the Lord that God delivers, you know, he, 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 he's a deliverer. And so, um, but you know, like I said, during that time of preparation, and like I said, I am currently writing a book now and, um, on, um, your journey from single to marriage, the Lord gave me this, dropped this on me at the beginning of the year. And I was like, God, what you want me to do with this? You know, and so the Lord, um, the Lord is wanting to prepare us as um, the body of Christ for kingdom marriages. And, um, and I was like, okay, Lord, I'll start writing. So I just been writing ever since. And I'm just looking forward and really um, sharing it with the body of Christ because it is, um, it, it is a part of my ministry. I do, um, you know, counseling. I do counseling in this particular area. I do counseling in, um, in the area of relationships. And so um, this is a piece that the Lord truly have dropped in my spirit and, um, and having me to um, release to the body of Christ that, that this is the time now where um, that women have to, you know, us, not just women, but men as well, have to go through that period of, of counsel, you know, and being able to get counseling. And, you know, because sometimes, you know, what ends up happening is that um, we don't see everything. You know, we don't see everything. Um, I don't see everything. You know, I'm. You know, when you are getting ready to, uh, you know, when the Lord, get ready to bring two people together. You know, you don't see because you 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 are excited. You know, you're excited. You're like, oh my God, finally. You know, he finally he finally here, or oh my God, she finally here, and it's like the you know the cream of the crop. You know what I'm saying? But and we miss those. Um, we miss those those different signs that the Lord wants to He wants to bring forth deliverance. You know, and. Um, you know, and, and, and because of counseling, you know, with counseling, it's like the Lord will begin to reveal those different areas, you know, and um, through counseling, you know. And so that, you know, like I said, you may not see, you may not see that area in him or he may not see certain areas in you. But with through counseling, then that counselor, if they're especially, if, you know, I'm not talking about world counseling. I'm talking about, you know, someone that is spirit filled, you know, that does that, that has the anointing to counsel, you know, cause even with, um, with, with, with being in leadership, um, everybody, just because they are a pastor, just because they are apostle, just because they are prophet or whatever, that does not mean it has the anointing to counsel, you know, and a lot of times we think because a person function in a um in a fivefold capacity we automatically think you know what they they account they can counsel and and pastors automatically are supposed to counsel but that's not all together <laughs> I, I i don't know i don't know a possibility because this book is gonna be kind of you know mind-boggling but um it's gonna pull a whole lot of stuff so we're gonna see about you know make sure we don't hurt them <laughs> but you know it's like um you know, um, when you have someone that is really, truly spirit filled, then they're able to see those things that is necessary. And like I said, especially if someone is anointed to counsel, you know, and, you know, we have this thing in the body of Christ where we are, like I said, we automatically think because someone pastors, then they are, you know, they are fit to counsel. But no, they're not. You know, everybody is not anointed to counsel. You know, and so I was just like I said last night, I was just blessed to have a, a pastor um, that pastored for 65 years that had that that has the anointing to counsel husbands and wives. I mean, on a great level to the point where it's like we ne we really didn't see that many um, divorces in our ministry. And there's there's those that's now that's still married to this day. You know, and so like, I said, you know, the video cut off last night. So, yeah, I can. That was the part that I was sharing when the video cut off. But, you know, the Lord um, bless you, Apostle. Um, you know, the Lord really began to, um, you know, he he really. Uh, you know, within that ministry, the Lord began to not only those that that had been married for years, but then it was like the Lord, um, 
um, that example flowed from those that have been married for years to even their children. And it's like their children has been married now for maybe some of their children been married now for like maybe 20, 20, 20 years, 20, 10 years. So, you know, it's like, you know, you seeing that that whole um, generation within that whole family bloodline of marriage, you know, of, of putting God first in their marriage and their marriages are blessed because they put God first. It hadn't always been easy, but they still maintain that marriage um, together. So that's been a blessing over the years when you could say that you was a part of that you was a part of ministry, that you received that level of um of um of counsel that level of wisdom and 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 that level of favor you know over the years and so so i just wanted to um you know just come on and and share and a little bit about um just because you know that that person does not um that person from years ago you met that person years ago and you automatically think that maybe that could be your your mate but that's not always the case just because you know him you know, just because you've been knowing her for so many years, it does not mean that, you know, she's the one or he's the one, you know. And so and the enemy sets up all kinds of traps for us to make sure that we do not get to the right, the right one, you know, the right one that God has for us. You know, it, many will come, many will come, many women will come, many men will come. But is it the right one? Is it the one that God has chosen you know, for you to walk with, you know, and, and, um, and being able to receive that and that he would, you know, he would begin to open up our eyes, you know, open up your eyes so that you can be able to say, this is the one that God is ordaining me to walk with, you know, it's, it's a lifetime journey. So it's not something that you can just wake up and just decide, you know, yeah, I want to marry somebody and you don't want to just marry somebody. There's some folk out here that, you know, there's some folk in the church that I'd be like, I ain't trying to marry. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying? We got to keep it for real. Some church, there's some people in the church, you just be like, keep right on walking. <laughs> you know, no, you know, and, but you know, you know, so we have to be pacific and allow the Lord to be pacific in what he reveals to us about who he wants us to be with. And so, like I said, just coming on and just um, just sharing a little bit. And I'm sure I'll be on again. I got to get used to coming on, you know, doing these some of these Facebook lives. And so, um, but I just wanted to come on and share with you all about, um, you know, just what God is saying about, you know, what he's bringing about different uh, marriages, you know, how God is bringing about marriages, how to... Um, be careful, you know, and, and, and choosing the mate and just, you know, and, and like I said, always have people of accountability, you know, don't just, you know, a lot of things, what we do because we feel like we've grown, you know, we adults, you know, we can take care of ourselves. Like we always, you know, I'm grown. I can take care of myself, you know, and I can, I can discern whatever, but you know, you need, we all need people. Um, we all need people of accountability, even with myself. You know, I'm, I'm, I know areas in my own life that I know that I'm like, if I don't pick up the phone and call somebody, <laughs> you know, for them to pray for me in that particular area, because I know my areas of, you know, you have to know your areas of strength and you have to be able to be vulnerable enough to know your areas of weakness. You know, those areas of weakness that's in you. You know, you can't sit up there and say, you know, you you strong and mighty because you are not the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, you're not the Lord God, God Almighty. And so the enemy sets up all kinds of uh, he sets up all kinds of traps, you know, and, um, you know, for you to go down the wrong road. And you think at the beginning that this person is the person that God has for you, then you end up getting. Yeah, you end up getting. Married. I know that's right, Apostle. You know, you don't want to be praying for any kind. <laughs> You know, and, you know, and so um, the enemy sets up all kinds of traps. And like I said, he will um, love you too, my sister. That's my sister for real, y'all. That's my sister for real, you know. <laughs> and um, and so, um, but, you know, um, the enemy, you know, you find out later the traps that, you know, that you 
fallen that you have fallen into. You know, the enemy don't care. As long as he don't as long as he don't connect you to the person that you're supposed to be connected to. And so I just wanted to come on, just share and everything. And I love you all. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for taking the time out just to listen. And even those that's coming on on the replay, you know, I thank you for coming on as well. And you know, just giving your time because your time is extremely valuable. And so I really appreciate you all. And I'm just going to just pray before I close out. I didn't pray last night. I felt in my heart that I should have prayed. But I didn't pray last night. Um, you know, it was it, it ain't had nothing to do with the devil. And it, had, I was just my, my, it was my connection. <laughs> you know, my connection was, you know, and I wasn't in the right place. And so it cut off. And, and I, I had used my, my, battery, my portable battery charger up. So I was like, well, you know, so it won't the devil. I don't blame the devil. I don't blame the devil on everything. <laughs> we don't blame the devil on everything. Some stuff is just us. Yeah, you know. But um but I'm gonna pray before we go off. And um I just want you to um enjoy your day. Finish enjoying your day. It's still sunny here, as you see, it's sunny in Sacramento. You know, the day is a hot day. That's why I'm under the sun, under the under the tree. You know, so I won't be burning to death. You know, I ain't dying. No, I ain't dying no time soon. So it ain't gonna happen. So that's why I'm under the tree. So you know, but um, I'm just going to pray before I hang, before I come on off. Like I said, you all have a wonderful day, and I love you all. And I'm looking forward. Well, Apostle um, Lawrence Simpson, I'm looking forward to you know when September come. When September come, I'll be in I'll be in Chicago in September. So I'm looking forward in meeting Apostle and meeting um Sissy Diane. She done Diana, she done ran off. I don't see on here now. But um I'm really looking forward to meeting you guys. I really love you all. And I'm um, just going to pray before I get out. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we love you. We bless you, Father. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, that besides you, there is no other God. And, Lord God, we just thank you for just the opportunity to be able to come on and to share on today, Lord God, to share your heart with your people. And, Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, Lord God, that every path will be made plain to them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, even those that may be single on, on the line, whether they've, they've been single and never been married and father but also you know those that have been married and is single um now father i just plead the blood over them and lord god that their paths lord god will be made plain you know that you would continue to lead and guide them into all truth lord god that 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 um the enemy would not be able to set them up for failure lord god but that they father will um that they will be ready, they will be prepared for the mate, Lord God, that you have in store for them, Lord God. And I just I just decree and declare the blessing upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. Even those that are on, that are married, Father, I ask that you will strengthen their marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind the enemy from working against their marriage. And Father, I just thank you and I plead the blood over their marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen and amen. So have a wonderful day. Love you all. Oh yeah, possibility. I I gotta look into how to load it on YouTube. I'm learning, so I gotta see how to do all that stuff. Cause y'all know I be tearing stuff up. <laughs> I be tearing stuff up. I don't get folk to, to show me how to do stuff. You know, I had to learn that years ago. I like I had to learn. You know, ask people. Ask them stuff. You, you've been to messed up some stuff, and you don't. They pride to keep you from asking folk, you know, like, no, nah, I don't know how to do it. Can you show me how to do it? Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> but anyway, love you all. Have a wonderful day and see you soon. Bless you.